to the Crafty Tinker. I am Nicole and I just would like to thank you for being here. This week I'm going to try knitting and talking at the same time. Wish me luck. <laughs> um, so sometimes it comes out and sometimes it doesn't, but I think I can probably do it today. Uh, after my experience knitting in the car over the weekend, uh, it has built my confidence a little bit. So we had to go away this weekend for my husband's job and he drove. We drove from New York to New Hampshire and it was about a four hour car ride. Um, and I figured I would try to knit in the passenger seat. Now, all of my family and friends know that I am a terrible passenger in the car. And I will tell you everything that's going on. I'm like a play-by-play -play sports announcer. There's a car entering the highway from the right. Oh, look, those cars are trying to get off on the exit to the left. Oh, they're braking up ahead. <laughs> Ooh, there's a car coming up really fast behind us. And so I, you know, my husband's a great driver and I trust him, but I even do that when I'm driving. Like, I don't know what it is about driving in the car, but I have to give this narrative. So this weekend I was knitting instead and it was pretty quiet because I had no idea what was going on around me. I mean, aside from the kids asking for, you know, us to put music on and all that stuff, it was pretty quiet. Um, so it was a good trip. And I didn't get car sick. Normally, I can't read and I can't, I can't even like look um, to the side too much to turn my head to the side because I do start to feel nauseous. So it was all highway driving. I'm sure that was a contributing factor to my lack of car sickness. Um, but it was great. The only little snafu I hit was when our GPS took us off an exit and had us get back on at the next exit. So we had to take like a little road. You know, we went, we got off the exit, we went straight over, we went down this little road, and then there was another light, and we went straight and back on the highway. And I stopped knitting after I had done two repeats of a new row to try to help navigate, like why on earth did our GPS do this to us? There wasn't a traffic jam, there wasn't a toll. You know, I we don't we still don't even know what happened, but anyway, it wanted us to get off the road for whatever reason. So I really hate when GPS does that, but um like sometimes when we go to Newark Airport, we go the Garden State Parkway, which has an exit right for Newark from the, you know, we go down the throughway, get on the parkway, then there's an exit, right, for Newark. Sometimes it will tell us to go across the George Washington Bridge. And we're like, that is the complete wrong way around. So anyway, I don't know why it does that, but sometimes it does. My knitting snafu came when we got back on the road and I had forgotten that I started a new row and I started to knit the previous row and I didn't notice until I finished and I looked at the pattern to see what the next row was and I realized, oh, I just did that row twice. So I had to tink back all the way to where I made um, the first error, the first repeat error, so. Uh, and to me, it feels like tanking back takes much more time than actually knitting. I could use lifelines, but I don't. So, and for anyone who doesn't know, a lifeline is, you know, like something that you put in your knitting 
as you're knitting across a row so that if you have to frog back to a certain section, you can just pull out your knitting needles and pull it all out, but your lifeline will stay there. So you don't have to worry about pulling the stitches out um, too far back. I guess that was a good description of it. So anyhow, uh, that was interesting. And so, but I finished my 11th motif on my sweater. Um, and I am still doing the body and then the sleeves. It's working out pretty well. I thought that I was going to be able to use one 25 gram ball of camel color and I came up just short. I did all but two repeats and then the regular knit row with the one color with the camel. So I ended up doing the spit splice And just to be able to finish up those two repeats and the last row. Um, I love that I can do that with this yarn. Speaking of doing this spit splice, I've been trying to do that when I begin a new round. But it's not working out quite how I imagined. So I do have a few ends to weave in. I was thinking this morning that I should probably start to do that because it's going to be a nightmare if I finish. I mean, <laughs> and have all those ends to weave in. I don't even like weaving in the ends of my hats because it's so tedious. So um, I need to really get on that. And I wish that I could figure out just how to join the yarn so that I don't have to weave in the ends, but it's a work in progress. So I'm learning every day. Um, I do have, I'm just double checking the pattern to make sure that I am actually knitting it correctly so that I don't have to tink back anymore. And I have been researching different ways to steek because I am not confident enough in my non-existent crochet skills, I think, to secure it with the crochet crochet stitch. I have a hard time saying that. Crochet stitch. Um, so a while back I had watched a tutorial that Arne and Carlos did on securing it with a zigzag stitch with a sewing machine and I think that's probably the way that I am going to go. Um, I have been sewing. Let's see I taught myself how to sew when our daughter was little. So I've been sewing for about 10 or 11 years now. I feel more, more comfortable with that method, although I've never sewn knitting. Uh, I One of our neighbors, actually two of our neighbors also sew. And so I'll probably go down and ask the one for advice on how to sew knitting, um, because I'm sure she's done it before. She's done all sorts of different costume things. So, 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 so. <laughs> and also when you sew it, when you secure it with a uh, sewing thread, it doesn't make it as bulky, I've been reading, as the crochet stitch does. And I don't really want bumps, you know, sticking up on the sides of the button bands. I don't need any extra bulk. So that is my plan right now. Yesterday there was a lady who had a project she was working on um, on one of my Fair Isle Knitting Facebook groups and she was asking for different methods of steaking and someone suggested felting the ends. And she was also wondering if she should secure it. And lots of folks said no, not if you're using like the stickier Shetland wool, you don't have to secure it. I guess up in the Shetland Islands and Fair Isle, they don't secure when they're steaking. 
I don't think I can do that. Um, so I don't think my, <laughs> I think I would probably have an anxiety attack if I didn't secure it. I think I may even with securing it. So we'll see. But I'm going to do a little testing steak. I'm going to knit a little like a uh, mug cozy or cup cozy or something. And I'm going to put a steak in that just so that I can get a feel for it and see, you know, how it goes. Um, but yeah, it's scary. It's really scary to think that you are knitting for however long it's taken to do a project. And for me, I mean, I started this in April. So by the time I finish it, I mean, that's months and months of knitting. And then you just take scissors to it and cut right up the middle of it. And but I know in the beginning that is part of the reason why I chose the uh, stickier Shetland wool. Um, but that's also part of the reason why I chose to make it a cardigan so that I can wear a layer between because it's a little on the itchy side for me. So anyhow, that's that. Make a long story longer. <laughs> Um, yeah, so those are the only two things that I've been thinking about with the sweater. Which method of steaking I'm going to do and also weaving in the ends. Um, and I saw something about, someone posted something again on one of the Facebook knitting groups I belong to and about inset pockets. And so that's something else that I may consider because I love pockets. Who doesn't love pockets? And so if I'm making a cardigan that I'm going to wear all the time, which I probably will wear it all the time in the winter, then I should probably put pockets in it. So I don't know about that, but we'll see. That seems like an advanced skill, but so does color work. So um, I just had to dive into it. When I started, like, you know, diving into the sweater, I just never made a sweater before, but figured, well, I'll do it. Um, so pockets too, maybe another just dive in endeavor, but we'll see once I get there. I just have to keep knitting, so. Anyway, my motif number 12, I'm using um, Tundra, which is sort of like a reddish brown color. I don't know if that is showing up, but it probably is. And moss over here. And I've used moss in one other motif um, up towards the top. Motif number three, but I used it with a light background color. So this one is a little bit darker. And as I've been going, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned before that I'm doing like light, dark, light, dark, and high contrast, low contrast. I'm doing that on purpose. Um, some of the low contrast colors are coming out with a little more contrast than the others, but I like it so far. That's all I have for this week. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to follow along with my sweater journey, please click this icon down here to subscribe and don't forget to click the bell for notifications. And if you have a favorite method of steaking and would like to tell me about it, please leave it in the comments below. Have a great day.